For this lesson, we're going to cover the steps needed to actually produce the audio area random entity connected to a shape. So what we need to do is first go to area, shape, and I want to make sure I have toggle snapping to geometry selected, and I'm going to create a box. So I'm clicking the points, and then I'm going to double click to end it. I'm going to change the height to 5, so it's 5 meters up, and we'll change this to AAR underscore shape. I'm going to click display filled so we can see it easier, and then click off. Now we've created the shape, what we need to do is go back and create the audio area random entity. So going into audio, we can click audio area random, and let's put it next to the shape. I'm going to turn off the snapping to geo, and move it upward. And now going back to the shape, we can add an operator. So if you don't have it, you can scroll it open. And we can choose a target, and we'll click add. In this darker area, we can click the point, and then now we've actually connected that, or married it to the actual shape. Let's go back to the area random entity, and what we want to do is we want to look at some of these entity properties. We obviously want it enabled. The max delay and the minimum delay are, as it sounds, the maximum amount of time that can surpass in between an audio random entity actually producing a sound, and the minimum delay is the opposite. So for the start, let's go ahead and put this to 5, and then we'll put the minimum delay to 3. The shape will not move, so we don't have to worry about it moving with the entity, and we can choose the play trigger to actually produce a sound. I'm going to go to L underscore global, and we'll choose the bird chirping sound effects. And then the last thing that we need to do is the RTPC, which, like the others, we're going to go to environment and choose the area of fade distance. We don't have any sound obstruction or stop triggers in this because it should just produce the bird chirping no matter what. So the next thing that we want to do is actually be able to see where it's being produced, and that is allowed through the console variable for the audio debug. So we're going to do draw audio, and we're going to choose draw audio debug, and this has numerous options. So we're going to choose A, B, C, D, E, F, and each one of these produces a type of visual cue or a debug on the screen. So now we can see what the ATL layer is, and if you don't have it on, we can turn it on, and then we can come in here, and we can see where the volume is actually being produced. So this is a point of origin, and the easiest way to imagine this is an audio trigger spot in these locations. But you don't have to place it, you can actually just produce it wherever you want within that shape. So I'm going to lower this so you can see it a little bit easier, and then we'll put this to point 0.2. change the camera FOV to something extreme so maybe we can see it easier so as you can see it's actually producing this sound all over the shape just based on the entity being able to have an audio area random pushed into a shape and not having to be able to control exactly where the trigger spot location is or having just a completely ambient sound, just like the audio area ambience is. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to create random audio. As you can see, this is a very powerful thing that you can put inside of your level. It allows you to create an ambient volume with a sort of an audio trigger spot for specific points in which it can be broadcasted out. So it changes the position inside of your own headphones, and for the player itself, when it's walking through, you don't have the same repetitious sound in the same location.